hello beautiful family welcome back to my youtube channel i was doing a reading for someone earlier today and a few of the questions that were being brought up for her were some things that i felt were going to be so beneficial for you to receive right now and i wanted to share this message with you guys as you guys can see i'm outside currently in my backyard my homestead type of area so if you see chickens walking back and forth it's because they're doing their best to scratch up this patch of grass right here this used to be green i promise you it used to be green but my girls just kind of do their thing um yeah so who where do i begin at the beginning all right so in the beginning neptune entered into the sign of pisces and at that point i told you guys listen this is going to be absolutely amazing for mankind because as a whole as the collective we are going our our consciousness is going to start to shift we're going to be more spiritually inclined and the realms of psychology and psychological healing and emotional healing are all things that are going to become very important to every single one of us and right on time right on target the very same things that were taboo to talk about, for example, mental health, emotional health, and prioritizing those things are now things that like everybody's talking about as if it's nothing. And if you're in this generation right now, if you're in our society, you probably have become accustomed to it to some extent because this has become our new normal. But the truth is, is that before this Neptune transit, this was something that was so forbidden, so taboo. And if you're talking about therapy or mental health, or depression or the s word or anything else like that you would have been pushed aside you would have been called crazy or whatever the case is so shout out to neptune transiting pisces for that at the same time though it's not always all good and it's not always all bad just like we have this amazing transit where our spiritual community is being highlighted and exalted that same community can become under target and under attack and there's different ways of this showing up. We'll see this in everybody's, um, you know, a tarot reader, everyone's an intuitive and everyone's starting these rituals and everyone's calling out to our spirits. And this is great. This is absolutely great. But the truth is, is that if you have so many people doing this and there's misinformation or miseducation or a lot of information being shared that isn't rooted in some sense of protection and some sense of respect, then something that could be very awesome and spiritually stabilizing and grounding and even magical can easily twist into something that is very toxic, taboo, forbidden, and go take a turn to the dark side. And we're seeing that a lot. One of the questions that my friend asked me during her reading is like, yo, Jess, what do you think is going on right now? Like, can you tell me, can you tell us, like, what is the vibe? Like, why does it seem like things are so spiritually dense. Like I'm having a hard time even getting out of bed. I'm getting having a hard time even honoring my spiritual practice. Like it, things feel so negative. Things can feel so dark. Things can feel so spiritually draining. What is it? And a lot of it is because we are literally in the midst, the very middle of this Neptune transiting through Pisces transit. And the thing that I wanna share with you guys is that whether you are a spiritual person, you have to remember that you have to have like spiritual hygiene. The very opposite of Pisces is Virgo. And Virgo, as you guys know, is a sign of perfection, but it's also the sign of health, well-being, and the rituals and the routines that we do every day to maintain our health of all the different minds, bodies, souls, and spirits. You could be someone who has an altar and is learning how to set up an altar. You could be someone who is um, learning how to connect with different guides and different gods and goddesses and, and exploring your spiritual practice because Pisces is at being activated within you and in the world. So you have no choice but to honor the season that we're all in right now, which is to explore our spirituality and even advance and level up ourselves. Oh my God, there's a bunch of birds flying by and they're just so beautiful. I don't think you guys are gonna see them, but they're there, trust me, I promise. But um, at the same time, you if you're not, you, you have to know how to call in certain things. You also know how, you need to know how to close out your circle. And it's very important that even if you're someone who is constantly at your altar honoring your ancestors, that there is a balance 
in you being here walking the earth as a human being living your existence and your truth now how much availability they have into your life um, and also making sure that you're spiritually cleansing yourself your chakra your third eye and keeping those areas of your body your spiritual body clear and cleansed this isn't an attack on you this isn't me um, saying to you that you're not you know clearing yourself or cleansing yourself enough or that you're doing anything wrong because that's simply not the case I'm actually a huge advocate in mental and emotional health and well-being and learning and exploring your spiritual sides and honoring your ancestors that is a big thing for me personally but on top of that we have to remember that if you are at your altar that it's very important that regularly you're clearing out your aura and that you're snapping out of your circle and you're not carrying that baggage with you in your day-to-day -day life because over time it will spark, start to spiritually drain you. The other thing that I wanna say is that um, Neptune transiting through the sign of Pisces and just being in a spiritual awakening time now is awesome, but with any anything that you are opening yourself up to, you're going to attract, you're gonna attract. So period, you're going to attract. So you'll tr attract the very best of it. You'll attract some very dark. So you want to make sure that you are really calling and talking to your ancestors and honoring your spiritual routine um, to ask them to protect you and ask them to block out certain energies. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that you're in the midst of a time period where spiritual warfare is very real and very active. One of the examples that I shared with my friends is I told her that, think about the war in Ukraine right now. Those people who are, are living in their homeland, they haven't done anything necessarily wrong, it's just their area is under attack. So they could be walking down their street and then something happens and that they could be negatively impacted by this or hurt by this in some major way, not because they've done anything wrong, because they're in a season in their life where there's tumultuous energy all around them. And at some point it would impact them in some way and touch their life in some way, made shape or form. So the same thing is true for us. If we're in a spiritually psychic, spiritually warfare time or psychic attack time where this is very vulnerable, if you are a sensitive person, an empath who is naturally being drawn to explore your spiritual side and explore your spiritual practice, you are also, as you're exploring that, you're going to naturally be open to other energies that might be intrigued by you, interested in you, and drawn to you. So you need to make sure that you are cleansing yourself regularly of that and also prioritizing peace and balance within your everyday life to make sure that health is in alignment. Now, I would be a huge hypocrite if I didn't share with you a personal story. A huge hypocrite. So I'm going to do that. I have always been a very spiritually sensitive person. I've always been a spiritually sensitive person, even before being a, a tarot reader, intuitive reader, or, or a witch, or any of that was cool. That has always been my existence. That's always been my grounding center in a very chaotic world for me. And having said that, it is very easy for me, and I have to constantly regulate my spiritual practice and my spiritual routine or I will be very susceptible to depression, to anxiety, to um, lethargy, or also overdoing. And this is a balance that I have to maintain within my life and uh, a spiritual hygiene, hygienic practice to make sure that as I am honoring my purpose and honoring the, the gift that is within me to feel empathetically connected to other people, I have to make sure that there's a distance and a disconnect and that I'm cleansing myself regularly or else all of the energy that I am working to consciously correct and make right and heal and do better doesn't turn into something that is dragging me or is showing up as energetic baggage. I also want to say that the S word energy is very, very high and rampant and it's just because the, the time that we're in right now where there's a lot of people who are spiritually open right now means that if you're not also simultaneously grounding yourself and if you're not reaching out for assistance and if you're not having balance in your life, it can come in and, and start to sink the ship and the ship is you. 
And I, anybody who's close to me and has ever got wanted to get to know me as a person has learned very quickly that these are things that I'm very open to sharing and talking about because as spiritually sensitive people, we have to talk about it because it's a part of it. It's under the same realm, it's under the same umbrella. So I've also noticed that my personal inbox for um, Bahati Life has been starting to fill up even more with people who are very open and honest and expressive in their own thoughts about the quality of their life and their idea of looking into the future and their purpose here and the feelings that they are holding onto in their everyday life. And I wanna say to you guys, because I haven't been able to respond to everyone yet, that you know you have to stay here. You have to stay on this earth. Like, um, just be here, just continue to be here. Um, every day and then the day and then the day and the day, just be here, just be present and choose to stay here. That's all you have to do. And um, I really wanna give that message over to you guys, but as a whole, as a collective, I just wanna say that you're not crazy. Um, you're not seeing things. There is a lot of chaos going on. We are in the middle of spiritual warfare. There is more psychic attack than anything other than that. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. And there is a way through this. It's by being in nature. It's by grounding yourself in activities that really support you and, and stabilize you. It's about getting those feelings out. It's about going to natural, natural bodies, the earth herself, and talking to her and connecting with her. It's about connecting with the elements, all of the different elements, and bringing them into your life, infusing their magic into your life. That's going to help balance and stabilize you. Also, be very mindful about things that get into the psyche. Be very careful about apps like so on social media, for example, TikTok, music, Instagram, Spotify, all those things. You have to be very cautious because you are a vessel. You so, and if that if you're a vessel, then it's very easy for you to absorb and to hold information and make sure that it's something that is positive. Don't allow yourself to get sucked into the black hole of content and um, an image, like a vision or a mask of how they're projecting something into the into the world. Because most of it is not reality. Okay. I'm real, I just pinched myself five times. I'm real, I feel myself here. I'm real, if you pinch me, you'll feel me. I'm very real, there's no there's no fluff here, you guys. I always say this to the people in my life and I say this here, I'm not never gonna bullshit you guys, never. <laughs> I've got too much Virgo in my chart to bullshit you. I'm always gonna give it to you guys, real 100. At the same time, I set intention for my own protection and to protect me from negative energies and those types of things. One last thing before you click out. One last thing before you click out. Um, one thing that I shared with my friend that's something I wanna share with you guys. She asked me, she's like, Jess, what type of rituals can, is it, can I do to kind of help myself through this season that I'm in in my life? And it's such an in interesting, simple ritual and I feel like anybody can do this anywhere. Um, I wanna share this with you guys. It's very, very simple. It's very purifying. It's very uplifting. It's very light. And I feel like it'll be great for everybody's not only mental and emotional well-being, but their spiritual well-being and their health. Take a bottle or take a bowl, something that um, uh, ideally is made of glass or clay, something that's more natural um, of the earth, and just kind of sit it out in your backyard or sit it out on a windowsill, kind of situate it so that whenever it rains that you're collecting that rainwater, right? Um, if there's any type of natural, if you don't feel comfortable in the environment that you're in, if you're in a place that absorbs a lot of um, pollution from the sky, and it kind of runs off into the rainwater that, is, that you would be able to work with and you can simply choose not to work with that rainwater. Follow your own intuition. I trust your intuition over anything else right now, right? And I trust my intuition over anything else. So I would just fill this bottle up with water. We have a new moon coming up and I, it's gonna be raining tomorrow. So what do you think I'm gonna be doing? I'm gonna have a, a container filled with, with the openness to collect that water. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to set the intention that this water be blessed. You can speak a, a power of intention or a prayer of intention over this uh, vessel of water, but this water is going to represent life, it's gonna represent purity, it's gonna represent peace, and it's going to protect you. Absolutely going to protect you because you're speaking that over this, it will work. Then what I want you guys to do is I want you to, my, my skin is itching from when I pinched myself to show you guys that I am real. <laughs> um, anyways, 
So then what you're gonna wanna do is take lavender, fresh lavender. You can get this at Whole Foods. You can get this at Home Depot. You can get this at Lowe's. I think maximum you can find lavender for like $6 for a whole container of it. It is a little expensive, but when you think about it in the long longevity of things, um, it's magical and it'll do it's it'll work the way that it needs to work for you in a way that's efficient and that six dollars is gonna be well spent so get like a lavender plant and honor it create a bond with that lavender plant it's gonna connect you to the earth it's gonna connect you to life it's gonna connect you to air to fire because and water because all of those things are being infused in that lavender plant that plant that you set your intentions I already know that some of you guys are gonna be like, Jess, I suck at keeping plant lives alive. I'll, keeping plant lives alive. Keeping plant life alive. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I twist of the tongue and a battle of the mind there, but you may not be as awesome as I am with getting orchids or plants to like live. This orchid right here is a rebloom. I, I wanna tell you guys, this plant has maybe rebloomed re like maybe seven times. I'm so good with plants, but I'm also a Virgo earth sign. So it's in my natural tendency. However, the reason why I'm saying this is that if you're not someone who is naturally good at keeping plants alive and you feel like inevitably you're gonna kill this plant, it's fine, it's fine. It's going to serve its purpose in its life for as long as it can and as long as you allow it to. And if you put an effort to keep the plant alive, to me, that's enough. To me, that's enough. So don't beat yourself up if and when this plant decides to die or depart from your life. It will give to you its magic for as long as it can. And if it's not dying in your backyard or in your windowsill, I guarantee you it's gonna die in someone else's. So having said that, you might as well use the magic for what it can give you in this moment in time, right? Can we keep it honest? Can we keep it honest? Can I be real with you? So yeah, so go get this lavender plant and keep it on your windowsill next to this bowl of water and allow yourself to kind of speak some intentions in that. You can even write down your intentions on a piece of paper, a notepad. I just happen to have this here because I was gonna refer to it, but I'm just naturally flowing with you guys. We're having a natural conversation, so I don't need to look down at my notepad. But you can write down your intentions for your peace of mind, for your protection during this really tumultuous time in our, in our life and kind of fold it up fold it up and put the date and the time, write your first name, first, middle, and last name, and also the time of birth, your time of birth, and just kind of tuck it into the plant. Right in along the sides, and then water it. Speak your petitions and speak your prayers over it daily. And then when you're ready, when you need to, and it's sat there for three to seven days, whatever it is that you feel called to, but I wouldn't do anything more than that, go ahead and pluck some of the lavender off of your plant and go ahead and put it in the bowl of water. Basically, now what you want to do is you want to set an intention for clarity, for peace of mind, for protection over your mental health, your emotional well-being, and your spiritual body. I don't want you guys to overlook the power of something as simple as lavender just because it's something that's accessible to you. A lot of times in our society, sometimes we start to think of things as less magical because there's something that we have access to and we start to look for something bigger and greater because in our minds, it's more magical and it's more powerful. The truth is, is that ultimately, yes, there are some very magical herbs out there and there are some things that are very hard to come by and once you get them, there's protection unlike any other. But the reality is, is that Lavender is also a very powerful plant. It's ruled by the energy of mercury and you can call in the energy of that into your magician-like body, into your ritual, into your purification process and you can sustain it and it will sustain you and it will give to you. So work its magic. The, the energy of lavender is so amazing for serenity, for peace of mind, for clarity of mind, but also protection. So activate that. Then what you wanna do as the lavender is kind of sitting in that bowl and you're constantly watering the plant or attending to that plant and giving it fertilizer and talking to it and giving it life. And then you keep refilling that bowl of water when anytime it rains, especially if it's a new or a full moon, pluck a little bit more um, flowers off of the plant, the lavender plant or the, the, the leaves of it. Just get a sprig of it, put it in that plant, kind of cover it shake it up eventually and then pour it into a bottle and just hold on to that bottle and carry that bottle of blessed water on your person use it to spray your body we do the same thing as witches when we're working with oils you guys know if you've ever bought from the apothecary you know we have the third eye oil 
there's this um, seven powers oil, there's the money oil, the same way that we would anoint an object or an anoint a candle with the oil or the water or whatever the case is, is the same thing that you're gonna do with your body. It's the intention behind it, it's the herbs behind it, it's the fire, the elements, all of it working together and you calling into spirit that activates its power to perform its mysterious magical powers in your life. Just do it, just do it. I promise you, it'll switch things Wow, up. so my phone just died, which is what I was using to record, but this camera is way better anyways. Why don't I ever use this? What I was trying to say is that, um, yeah, don't forget how basic, things that seem basic, they're actually pretty powerful, but sometimes we can lose sight of its power just because it's something that we see often or that it was a general thing that people are gravitating towards in the first place. And lavender magic is one of those things that I feel 1000% will help you to work with your magic. It's something that we all have assessed, like it's accessible to us. It's something that we can maintain. And it's something that for it, it, the accessibility and the simplicity, the value and the magic and the power behind it will stretch itself and go very, very far. It'll take you a very far way, especially when we are in such heavy, dark times. The best thing to do is the very opposite of that, and that is to work with the light and to work with simple and to work with simplification. Things are dark and, and dense and complex and then what you do is you pull into the opposite of that and you turn your day-to-day -day rituals and your routines into something that is light and easy and simple and lavender is the epitome of that. So I really want to encourage you guys to get moving with that. If you're someone who's just like, yo Jess, I'm losing my motivation or or maybe you have so much fire and so much power and so much excitement within you, channel it, channel it heart like literally channel it like a bow and arrow focus it okay and the way to do that too is focus but also lavender is amazing for the power of the mind and focusing the mind all right so I'm gonna go ahead and personally set up my receptacles is that the right word I'm gonna go ahead and set up my things that I use to collect water now because I can literally smell rain on the air right now I thought we were gonna have until tomorrow that it's gonna rain but clearly the clouds are saying otherwise it's cloudy but I can literally smell the rain um, until then you guys if you need me you know where to find me in the apothecary thank you so much for vibing with me once again yo thank you so much for vibing with me once again if those of you guys are brand new hi I'm Jess um, thank you for being here I uh, you can always find me in the apothecary working my magic. I'm a practicing witch. Until then, you guys, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this video because there's plenty more where this came from. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.